Um, okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the LIP uh, project and the networks that um, are involved with, uh, with our work. Um, there's two parts to this presentation. I want to talk a little bit about defining the collaboration through the LIP project, and I want to talk a little bit about um, a project we did on network mapping. And I think uh, it will probably reflect really well with uh, some of the um, discussions we've already had today. So for folks who don't know about the LIP project, um, LIP is, a, is the Local Immigration Partnership. It's funded by CIC. And the purpose of it is to um, provide a collaborative framework for agencies to uh, work together and provide services for newcomers. Um, uh, the way we set up, I'm going to talk a little bit about the LIP project prior to the merger and then a little bit after the merger. So, uh, previous to being Toronto South LIP, we were Toronto East LIP, which was, um, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little crazy, but uh, it'll make sense. Uh, the, our boundaries were from the Don Valley to Victoria Park and the lake to about the St. Clair-ish area. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about what happened in April when we merged and our, our catchment area got a little bigger. So this is a Toronto East LIP, the way we set it up was we had a partnership council, um, that had um, agencies that uh, work with newcomers in our catchment area. Um, we had um, a community forums and focus groups where we talked to agencies and we talked to uh, grassroots groups around the, a settlement strategy. And then we actually set up some work groups as well around specific topics um, um, in, that people want to talk about in settlement, for example, employment, and um, outreach and navigating services, and I'll talk a little bit more about the work groups. So the point of all of this sort of structure was to um, uh, to develop a settlement strategy. So the input from all those three groups um, sort of fed into the development of a settlement strategy. So that's the LIP project in, in, uh, in general. And all the LIPs, um, there were 17 across the city, and all 17 sort of had that same um, focus. Um, so this was the how we had structured our, our LIP project. We had our partnership council, and our goal was to develop a strategy, a settlement strategy, and an action plan. We had six general uh, topics, issues, um, and some of them were work groups, some of them were work. So um, I'll just go through. So we had a labor market out outcomes, um, and we actually, actually had two work groups that came out of that. One was an informal employment work group, and one was an employment services work group. So that was in collaboration with the, uh, Employment Ontario. And the informal employment work group was really a, a group of um, grassroots groups that actually um, uh, talked about or helped us have a discussion around informal work and what newcomers were facing around employment that was not uh, part of the formal labor market. So we just, and we did get some funding uh, at, from Wellesley, and we did a research project on the informal um, infor informal economy, which is actually due out in September? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's due out in September. Mm -hmm. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that, because that's going to be a good piece. Um, we also had a language training work group that talked um, or discussed things like uh, um, ESL and link classes and conversation circles. And the biggest thing that that group came up with was just a common calendar of classes in our area. So they actually got together and discovered everybody offers classes on Tuesdays. So they, it was actually a really good planning tool because it was just a matter of sitting down and getting everyone's schedule onto one big calendar and realizing that Tuesday was jam-packed with every level of ESL link conversation circle you can think of. And I think Thursdays was the one that was very not so much. So it was just a matter of sharing schedules and then being able to um, um, change it, right? And say, you do Tuesday, I'll do Thursday. You do Wednesday, I'll do Tuesday. So that was a great um, success that came out of that group. Um, informal settlement work, work group. Um, uh, we, we know that people settle in informal ways. Not everyone goes to a settlement agency. Um, and we know that people settle through their neighbors, through their friends, through their taxi drivers, through their local restaurant, through faith groups, et cetera. And it was really, we tried to really get a grasp on 
how to get the correct information, the recent updated information to those groups that, that newcomers actually turn to, probably more than they turn to agencies. So it's really um, trying to develop some kind of strategy of getting that information out to people so that when they're looking for the information and they turn to their closest friends, neighbors, relatives, that they have the information that's current um, and not you know, from 10 years ago when they actually came to the country. So um, there, that was the, the focus of that group. Um, we had an outreach and information group as well, and what we did with that is we uh, organized a frontline staff network. I think we had four or five meetings over the course of the year, and it was really about sharing um, information with frontline staff around services, programs, and eligibility criteria, and we really had, if you think about what happens at the beginning of a meeting where everyone introduces themselves and tells you what they're, okay, so our entire meeting was just that part. So everyone got five or 10 minutes and really talked about the services in detail, what the criteria is, what the eligibility is, and so that everyone can have a better idea when making referrals. Um, and uh, we had a, a group called Navigating Services, and what we did there is we developed a pathways document. It is on the OCASI wiki, if people are interested, I have the address there, and we'll put up the uh, presentations on, on the website for you later. But it is a document that basically outlines, or, or um, it, we drew out basically a path of settling, what it is to settle in, in Canada, or in Toronto specifically. So it started off with, here you are landing at Pearson International Airport, and this is what you have to do right away. This is what you have to do within the first week or two weeks, and then the first couple of months, and then all the way up to year three when you're eligible to apply for citizenship. Um, it is a document that's set up like, um, like a flowchart, and each little box can, is clickable with uh, more detailed information. So uh, if you're looking for a SIM card, you can click on it. There's the application, the website, the address where you can apply for your SIM card, etc. cetera. Um, and that's really a really useful uh, tool that uh, we could use to not only train staff and other frontline staff, uh, frontline, uh, a frontline network, but also for newcomers that can see the entire process on in, on in flow chart. So that's available online if you're interested in that. But the part I really want to focus in is this section right here. Um, we had a group called, uh, originally it was called Key Support Services, which was a group of agencies that worked with newcomers, were not funded to work with newcomers, so they were the other groups, right? The family support, the health care, the housing, all those other kind of groups that actually did see a lot of newcomers and did a lot of that informal settlement work because they were their clients and that's the questions that were coming up but they weren't actually settlement services. So the group became a now system-wide coordination group and this is the, the part I'm gonna focus on. So can I ask you a oh, question yes. about your, not your pathways document? Sure. Does that come in multiple languages? No, right now it's just in English. Um, that would be great if we could do yeah, that. Yeah. Because a lot of people that arrive don't speak yeah, English. Absolutely, um, yeah. But um, I noticed just in front of working in the industry that everything is provided yeah. in one common language, which is English, which yeah. is great. But so many people don't speak English yeah. anymore. Well, it was developed specifically for staff originally, oh, right? So it was a document that was really to help staff navigate the, right. the system. Okay. It is being used in other ways now because it, it, it's very useful for newcomers as well. But mm -hmm. Um, if at some point we could get funding to get it translated, that would be awesome. The other thing about it is that it needs a lot of updating because it is really, um, it is an interactive uh, piece and when you click on it you have, you get the, you know, the application forms and the phone numbers and the websites and so as those things change and, you know, locations move and offices move and Service Canada moves from here to there and whatever. Um, you know, we have to keep we have to keep doing, we have to keep changing it. And it is right now only for Toronto East because that was yeah, it is only for Toronto East. But it is on the wiki, which means <coughs> that people are welcome to go in and add other uh, you know, from the other parts of Toronto to add in other offices and things like that.